If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome to Spirit Guides Thursday Thoughts. This is the place where you will get to hear snippets of conversations I've had with people over the years and get a variety of thoughts for you to consider for today. Enjoy. So today's episode is going to be about smudging. Now, if you have never smudged before, this is going to be a great episode to watch the video. I know that some of you are listening to this on audio, but I would highly encourage you to come over to YouTube to watch the video because I am going to do an example of how you smudge. And I will be walking away from the microphone from time to time, so be prepared. So this is a traditional smudge pot. It is an abalone shell. You can buy these on pretty much any online store or new age store. I, this is my second abalone shell. My first one cracked eventually. It did give up, but you know, they, uh, they're, they're not that expensive. So, and then there are different kinds of smudge. So this is a sage and sweet grass. So this is, this is plain sage and sweet grass. No, I'm sorry. This is just plain sage. You can get sage and cedar. You can get sage and sweet grass. They all have different purposes. If you go to the store and read the instructions, they'll tell you all about those. My favorite type of smudge is the white sage. And the reason for that is that the regular sage smells a bit like pot. And a funny story, when I first opened my retail store, my new age, you know, spiritual education and healing center store, I smudged the store every morning. And one day a police officer walked in and he was going, and I looked at him and I said, I bet you think we've been smoking pot in here. And he said, yes, ma'am, I do. I said, no, we, we haven't. I said, let me introduce you to Sage. And I lit it up for him and I, I showed it to him and I explained to him, I don't think he believed me, but it, it was true. So there was nothing he could really do about it. So, but uh, from there on out, I, I started using white Sage just because it was easier than trying to explain to people I was not smoking pot. So, and of course that was before pot was legal in Massachusetts. So yeah, anyway. So I prefer the white sage for that reason. I also like the smell better. It is a, a nicer smell. So if you are, and, and this particular uh, uh, sage bundle that I have, which I don't remember where I got it from. I think somebody gave it to me. Uh, it, it has an oil infused in it. I'm not sure what that oil is, but I'm, I was like, why are my hands sticky? Ooh, ooh, they smell like a, oh, it's a really nice oil too. Ooh, so somebody doctored this thing up and it's, it's sweet. It's very nice. So, but I'm going to show you that. And then over here is a feather fan. And I got this one from tri tribal something to in, I, in a mall store, right? You can get these online. These are pheasant wings and I love it because it really makes the air move, right? It really moves the air well. And uh, the, the reason that you need it for smudging is because it allows you to direct the air into different areas in the room and you want it to cover everything in the room. And so here's, here's the warning, okay? When you're doing smudge, you are dealing with fire. Same thing with Palo Santo. Although I, I have to tell you, unless you are of the native tribes that for whom Palo Santo is sacred, please don't use Palo Santo. It is, it is endangered and it is running out. And the people for whom it is sacred are having a hard time finding it. And that's not fair to them. Okay. So use smudge. Smudge is more readily available. Obviously go looking for ethically sourced smudge because a lot of these places now that it's become you know readily available or, and popular they're over harvesting and killing plants and things like that so you want ethically sourced uh, smudge preferably from a native source if you can get it so pay attention to that as you're buying but i would go for smudge over palo santo for that reason now the 
I'm going to show you, and here's your warning, regardless of which one you're doing, you are working with fire. So be careful because you can set your house on fire if you're not careful. Okay. And what I'm wearing right now, this, this filmy little thing is, is not the best choice because if an ember hits it, it could go up and I could go up with it. Okay. So be conscious of the clothes that you're wearing. I'm not going to light this for the reason that I'm wearing this. And I just don't feel like getting changed and whatnot, but I'm going to show you how it works. And so you'll light the smudge and, and you want it to get a nice big smoke. I mean, oh, good amount of smoke. So you're going to light it until, until there's actual flame coming off of this. You're going to let it burn for 30 seconds to a minute. Let it really get going. Let there be a lot of this on fire, you know, maybe move it around a little, try not to burn yourself, be very careful and then blow it out and make sure when you blow it out, you don't blow it towards anything fabric because you might blow embers, right? So blow it towards something that's not going to be a problem if there are embers coming off of it. And then the, the smoke will start to rise and then you can hold the bowl like this and use the fan to fan the bowl and the embers, right? And you may have to, if you look at my bowl, I've got, you know, four or five of these sticks, these tiny little sticks. And the bigger ones, you don't need four or five of them, but it will take longer to light them because the bigger bundles are more densely packed and therefore they don't light as fast. You may want to light a candle to light them because it, you know, it just takes it hard, it's harder to light them. But once you get them going, they get going. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sweep the smoke into all of the corners of the room. And uh, I said I was going to get up, but I'm not going to. So, and you're going to want to put it into the chair fabrics and the, you know, any fabrics, if you've got curtains, if you've got fabrics, whatever, again, you've got to be really careful because you could get a, a, an ember, you could burn a hole in something. So you want to be careful with this process, right? And that allows you, you want to sweep it into all the upper corners of the room, all the lower corners of the room, throughout the space, you want to smoke the place out, right? And then that is how you cleanse, but you want to hold the intention of cleansing the air. Now, the bonus about using actual sage, white sage or otherwise, is that sage itself is antibacterial, antimicrobial and anti something else that I'm not remembering, but it is naturally a healing of the space. It's disinfecting of the space. And so it has its own cleansing properties that it, it provides. So now what if you can't smoke a place up? What if you're afraid to work with the fire? What if you don't have smudge, right? No problem. You can do the same thing with sound. You can get a rattle, you can get some bells and you can ring, ring the bells in the corners or ring the rattles in the corners and intend for the space to be cleared by the sound. What if you don't have rattles or bells? No problem, use your voice. Just pick a tone. And just tone until you feel the space clear. And that's what I just did there. I just toned until I felt the space clear. And you can do that. You can tone and, and you know, you can bring your voice into the corners and bring it into the, the, the fabric and whatever else, right? And, and that's an option too. So remember, okay, magic is intent. It is focused intent. If you can see it and you can believe it and you can intend it, then it works, okay? So smudging is no different. The, the, the benefit of using actual smudge is the disinfectant properties that, it, that the plant itself actually has and adds to the process. But if you don't have it or you can't use it or you're allergic to it or whatever, there are many, many, many other ways to clear your space. <laughs> and so that's your tutorial for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it and I want you to go and clear your space today and whatever way you, you can, I want you to go and clear your space today because 
we all don't clear our spaces often enough. And, and if you're curious, once a week is a good, a good, good time frame for that. Okay. So uh, if you want to learn more about magic and how it works and how to bring it into form into your life, the Inner Peace 101 program is a great way to do that. Join us there. It's a four-month program and it has the added benefit of also making you happier. Yay, we love it. Check it out at kellysparta.com forward slash inner dash peace dash 101. And uh, you will find that link in the show notes and in the description. So thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you next time. And that's it for this week's Thursday Thoughts. Join us tomorrow for the Ascend Day on the Spirit Guides podcast. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,